All right, so there's something really exciting and cool that I want to show you regarding images in NeoVim. Let me jump to my Obsidian repo real quick. Notice that I have this file open, right? I have an image here below. I'm going to hover over it and you're going to notice that this loading window shows up with the image there. Let me keep scrolling down a little bit more. There's another image here. If we keep scrolling down, there's another one here as well. Another image, another image. Notice the format of the images. These are WebP images, but I have a different image right below here. This is an image loaded from a URL. Notice that I can see it as well. And I see images in a different format. Let's give that a try. I think I have other images somewhere in here. Yep, here, comparing images in different formats. Let's take a look at this screenshot, transparent terminal section. I have some images in different formats here. This is ABIF. Notice that I can see it without any issues. A WebP image, I can see it as well. This PNG image as well. And the JPG image as well. Let me show you something else real quick. If I open the snack speaker, let me just switch to another repo real quick. And I open it here real quick. And I'm just going to search for an ABIF file. You searched for ABIF there. I have different ABIF images. Notice that I can see them on the right. I can see the preview of each one of those images. Notice the next item that I have here on the list on Skitty Notes. I can even preview an MP4 file. It's not going to play the video, but you can get an idea. Let me switch to my dot files real quick. And I'm just going to look for here that MP4. And notice here that I have this video and I can get a preview. I can get just an idea on what this video is about. So that's pretty cool. I'm a huge fan of viewing images in NeoVim. And why is that? If I jump back to my blog post real quick, notice that I'm here in the blog post. You're going to notice that in my different articles, I paste images. Let me open another article just to give you an example. Let's search here, for example, for this article, right? Let's take a look at this one. And if I go to one of the headings in this file, this Tmux heading, for example, Tmux splits, you're going to notice that I have an image here. I can preview that image. Um, I have another image in different sections. If I go to this other one, no, not there. Btop, for example, I have an image here, this section as well. So it's quite useful. Why? Because people that are reading the blog post can have a better idea of what I'm talking about if I just show them an image. And for me, as the creator of the blog post, it's very convenient to be able to see the images when I'm editing a file. I also sometimes view images in my notes. I don't do that often. Honestly, I never do that. But there are rare occasions in which I need to paste an image in my notes, right? So that's when all this becomes pretty handy. As you can see here on the right hand side, right? Before I was using a different plugin, image that in BIM. I have been using that plugin for a little bit less than a year and it has worked great. But just yesterday, I discovered that Folky released a new Snacks plugin. It's called Image. And that is the one that I'm using right now to view images here in my terminal. The main difference between the two is notice how the images are rendered here, right? So if I come to this section, notice that there's a floating window, right? So it's pretty convenient. If I could just scroll down a little bit, can go to the other image. Notice how fast each image loads. But that's because Funky implemented a caching mechanism. I'll let you know how that happens in a minute. But needless to say, I'm switching over to this new method of viewing images. I'm going to miss the image that I've been plugging. It has been my friend for quite a long time. I love the plugin, but the time has come. Now, in case that you don't know who did all this, who is this guy, Funky? I'm just saying his name incorrectly. I have done so all the time. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. But he is the creator of a lot of different projects. One of them is the distribution that I used, which is LazyVim. It's just a NeoVim distribution. He's also the creator of the plugin manager called Lazy.Envim, the one that you see on the top. Tokyo Night is a theme that he created, Trouble.Envim, WitchKey, the Snacks.Envim, collection of plugins, we could say, Noise.Envim. And if we keep scrolling down here, you're going to find a lot of different stuff. Flash.nvim as well is a huge one. So if there's something that you like about NeoVim, Funky is probably involved. So if you want to learn more about all of the plugins and all of the stuff that Funky has worked on, I'm going to leave a link in the video description so you can go and check this out. Remember, if you like the plugins that he has created, just give him a star. Most of them have thousands of stars already, but you know, we can still show some support. Before I continue, I also want to thank my supporters. I always forget to do that. Notice that I have some sections here. Let's see. 
I'm just going to unfold all the headings here. And I have some supporters here, the YouTube memberships. I have this YouTube Discord membership, this other Kofi membership, Super Chats, and the people that have donated one time in Kofi. I have them listed here. Hold on, there's someone that I'm missing here. Let me add that name real quick. There we go. I just added it here at the bottom, Robert S. Koss. So I just wanted to say thanks to each one of you. Really appreciate it. Also, before I forget, in case that you want to join our Discord server, there's around 80 members, I think, as of today. If you have questions, if you need support, if you want to help others, if you want to meet others with your same interests, just make sure you join there. Pretty nice people, pretty helpful. I'm also going to leave the link in the video description, but just to give you an idea, here is Discord, and uh, yeah, I'll see you there. How did I find out about this um, image plugin created by Folky? Yesterday, I was creating another video related to Obsidian. If we come here and I'm just look for this, this is the video that I created yesterday. I just talk about how I switched over from Obsidian to Neovim, how I can do all of the things that I used to do in Obsidian and Neovim using a lot of key maps that I have implemented and a lot of stuff, right? So when I was recording that video, I opened the snack speaker, which is the one that we see here. And I noticed that I could see images on the right hand side. And that's what got us here. So remember, if you want to understand more about why I switched over from Obsidian to Neovim, I would highly recommend you to go and check that video out. I explain all of the different things that I do in Neovim. Notice also here that the float idea is something that I like a lot compared to the way that it used to work on the previous plugin. So if I hover over an image, I don't have a lot of lines below. I just have um, this little square there. If I go down, that's it, you know, it's not intrusive and it integrates really well with your workflow. Let me show you the old way of doing this. I'm just going to switch here to my dot files and I'm going to search for the image that nvim that Lua file. I'm going to enable it because I have it disabled. Notice that I have it enabled set to true now. I'm going to disable snacks real quick. Let me switch to that file and I'm just going to set this to false, right? So I'm just doing this so that I'm not using the um, snacks image plugin, but instead I'm using the old image that nvim plugin. Let me switch to my Obsidian repo real quick. I'm just going to restart here. You're going to notice that I'm back in the file. Let's look at some images. I'm going to hover over this image. It takes a little while, but notice that if I scroll down, it moves stuff around because it's not a floating window. So it's a little bit disruptive. It's fine. I've been using it this way for a long time. I already got used to it. But let me go over this again, right? So notice how everything moves when I switch to different images. That could be because I use the Stay Centered plugin as well, but you know, not a big deal. It's just something that you need to keep in mind. And every time that you load an image, it's just going to load it again. And it's going to take a little bit longer because it doesn't have any sort of um, caching mechanism the way that the other plugin has. So just let me switch back so you can compare again. I'm just going to undo this change and I'm going to go to the other file. I'm going to undo this and I'm going to set this to enabled false as well. Let's go back to this session. I'm just going to restart here, Neovim. Now we're in the same file, but with the Snacks image plugin. So let me just go over each one of the images. Notice how fast each one of them loads, right? So I can go up and down and uh, my workflow is not interrupted. I don't know. I just feel that it integrates a little bit better, but it's because of this floating window. Where can you find the documentation for all this? I left a link here. I'm going to leave this link in the video description as well. Just let me go here, GX. If we scroll down a little bit, you're going to find here the image.md file, which is related to this specific snack. You're going to be able to find all the different options here, the instructions, the things that you need to modify. I'll let you know in a little while what things I did and whatnot, so you can have a better idea as well. So if we keep scrolling down here, you're going to find the setup here, the config. Here's where you modify the different options. If you want the images to have a different width and height. If you want to have that floating window that I just show you right now or not. So this is where you set all of this. Here we can see the cache information as well. We're going to take a look at it in a little while. If you're a Tmux user, there's something that you need to keep aware of or something that you need to keep in mind. Notice that I'm using Tmux right now and I don't have any issues with the images, right? So let me open my Tmux configuration file. Let's see tmux.conf. There is the file. And this is the line that I was looking for. Allow pass through is set to on. I already had this configuration set from the previous plugin image.nvim because it was required. So 
If you don't have it enabled, make sure you add it there. But notice what it says here in the documentation as well. It says there that Snacks automatically tries to enable allow pass through equal on for Tmux, but you may need to enable it manually in your Tmux configuration. So to avoid any issues, just come here at this line and reload your Tmux config. What else? Notice that this other requirement, image magic is required to convert images to the supported formats, all except PNG. How do you install image magic? I also had it installed because I used it with the previous plugin, right? I have a video in which I explain how to set all of that up. I'm going to leave this link in the video description as well. So if you're on macOS, notice that you just do this brew install image magic and um, what else, what else? You can find some other instructions here. You have to make sure that you're not missing any dependencies. Notice that in this case, I'm not missing the package dash config dependency. If you're missing that, you will have issues. So just make sure that you're not missing it. And if you do, you can install it with this other command, brew install package dash config. If instead of using this snacks image plugin, you want to use the image.envim plugin, which is the way that I used to view images in the past. I have a video is related to the article that you see on the screen right now. And it's the one shown here. It's eight months old. And there I explain how to set all of this up. Notice that also you need to have a compatible terminal. I'm using Ghosty. You can use Kitty without any issues. I think you can use Westerm. All of that information is in the documentation here as well. Notice that Westerm has only limited support for the Kitty graphics protocol. Inline image rendering is not supported. Also, if you don't use Tmux, but instead you use Selich, it's not supported since they don't have any support for pass-through. You may be wondering, why is image magic required? Like, I was wondering the same thing but I think I know why that is. Let me just mark this as done. Let me jump back to my dot files and I'm just going to jump to the snacks file. Here it is. Here I'm in the image section. Notice that you have to enable it. Otherwise it will not work, right? So I'm in the image section here, enabled, set to true. This enables the plugin. And if you read here a little bit down, notice that um, all of the images that you preview that you see in NeoVim are converted to PNG and they are cached. The original image remains the same. Remember that all of my images are AVIF. Most of them are AVIF. Everything that you see in my blog post is AVIF. But I think that what happens is that this Nax image plugin converts them to PNG and that PNG image is what you see when you preview it. And for that conversion to happen, you need image magic, right? So that's why you need to install it. Unless all of your images are PNGs, I don't think you need image magic in that scenario. But if that's not the case, you will need to install it. Where are these cached images stored? Notice that if I run this command, right? I'm just gonna copy this. I'm just gonna run it here. It's gonna show me a directory, which is the directory that we see here. I'm just gonna copy this. I'm just gonna bring up my terminal. Now I'm going to switch to that directory. Let me go one directory back, right? Let me go up here. And I just want to see the size of this. Let's see, the U, this, I just want to run this command. I just need to type my password here. I'm just going to use this. Notice that the size of this directory is 130 megs. If I go into this directory and I list all the files, you're going to notice that I have a lot of different images and all of them are in the PNG format. So that's why it's so fast, I think, because the cached image is what you see when you hover over an image. So if you compare this experience to the way that the image that NVIM plugin works, and if you have been using images in NeoVim for a while, you're gonna love this plugin. I can guarantee you that. What other options can you modify here? Well, at least the ones that I have modified is um, this inline, I set it to false, but only for Skitty, notice that I set it to true. What is Kitty? Is the app that you see here on the right, right? So in Skitty Notes, I want to show the images all the time. So that's why this is set to true. But in my main NeoVim configuration, I don't want to show all the images. I just want to show them when I hover over them, right? So I achieve that by setting this to false. If you want to see them all the time, just make sure that you set this inline to true. You can get rid of all this, right? So just inline true and that's it. What else? Float. I set this to true because I do love to see the floating window. I think that's genius, so I'm just going to keep that setting. Here you can specify as well the width and the size of the image. 
Notice that for Skitty, I set them to a smaller size, 20, and for my regular NeoVim config, 60, and the same thing for the height, right, 10 and 30. Those are the only settings that I have changed so far. That's actually all I need to modify at the moment. But remember that if you want to modify other stuff, you can go to the documentation and you're going to find all of the different options here. Something else very important is this check health snacks. Let me just grab this. I'm just going to copy it and I'm just going to jump back here. I'm going to paste this command and we're going to notice that it shows us the check health for the snacks plugin. What I'm interested in right now is this snacks image. Notice that everything shows OK. Kitty, Western, Ghosty, Magic is installed. It shows you the version. Ghosty detected and supported. Supports Unicode placeholders. Inline images are available. Tmux detected and supported. Terminal dimensions. Everything is OK, except for these files. I don't use them, so I'm good with that. In case that you cannot see images or you're having issues, make sure you come here. and You should be able to see everything listed here as OK. So this is pretty exciting news. I really love this. Um, I'm excited to see that image support is being included more and more into NeoVim. Remember that I'm going to leave all of the links in the video description in case you want to go to the documentation. I'm also going to leave a link to my dot files. Remember that if you like my dot files, if you find useful information, give them a star. One other thing that I forgot to mention, notice that I'm not using telescope anymore. I'm using the new Snack Speaker plugin. So just in case that you want to know why I switched over and in case that you want to understand and learn how to set it up the way that I did, I have a video. It's a little bit long, but I cover everything in detail. You're going to find it listed here. Remember, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you like the channel, subscribe. If you want me to keep creating videos like this, just let me know down in the comments. I hope this video was useful and I'll see you in the next one.